uh, which are serious and infrequent. We come to oral question. Kiritapu Allen. Mr Speaker, uh, my question is to the Minister of Finance. What specific examples of capital spending pressures has he been advised of in preparing for Budget 2018? Mr. The Hon. Grant Robertson. Mr Speaker, I have been advised of significant capital spending pressures across multiple portfolios, including defence, education and health. For example, DHBs have signalled a required capital spend of $14 billion over the next 10 years, which will require $9 billion of additional Crown funding. This signalled investment requirement is higher than at any time since DHBs were established, reflecting nine long years of underinvestment. I have also been advised of $20 billion of potential spending for defence stemming from the 2016 Defence White Paper, which does not appear in capital spending forecasts. Oh, supplementary, sir. sir. Was the funding path for defence capital spending made clear at the time of the announcement of the White Paper? Mr Speaker, on the contrary, while the then Minister of Defence claimed that there was now, quote, a degree of funding certainty that enables it to plan with confidence out to 2030 and beyond, in reality, as one commentator has said, the National Government never accurately costed it and made no provision in any of its long-term forecasts to pay for it. In fact, the previous Minister of Finance has now said that the previous government had hoped to stretch out the book dates for some capital purchases to be made. This is far from providing certainty. Supplementary, sir. How is the government going to address the issue of defence capital spending? Mr Speaker, as the coalition agreement indicates, the first step for the government is to re-examine the defence procurement programme. We believe that we can find better value for money for New Zealanders as we look to fund our future defence needs. This is the responsible thing to do, given the mess left by the previous government. The Hon. Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, is the Finance Minister aware that the defence capital plan is for $20 billion of expenditure over 15 years and is able to be funded by a combination of depreciation and the nearly $110 billion of unallocated capital funding over that same period of time, and as he considers it as increasingly frequent attempts to divert attention from his plan to ramp up debt, risks looking a little silly. Oh, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. The, the Minister. The Minister can answer any one of those three Mr. questions. Mr Speaker, I will not be lectured by that member who grew, who grew government net debt by $50 billion on his watch. If there is anyone in this House who needs to take responsibility for debt levels, it's that member. I would also say, I would also say Mr Speaker, that the $110 billion he mentioned is based on some heroic assumptions that he made, is heavily backloaded and in fact only contains $33 million of forward spending in the next 10 years. Point of order, Mr Speaker. A point of order, the Hon. Stephen uh, I seek leave to table the fiscal strategy report from Budget 2017, which clearly lays out... Order. The, order. the member will resume his seat. Um, I, it, I warned Dr Coleman when he tried something uh, similar. Um, <laughs> the member might have a short time in here. Um, I, I, I warned Dr Coleman when he was uh, attempted to table something which had, was already in the public arena uh, and in fact had already been tabled that I regarded that as disorderly because it is trifling, it is trifling with the House and it will not continue. Supplementary question, the Right Honourable Winston Peters. Uh, Mr Minister, in this age of much vaunted transparency, openness and budgetary honesty, how was this forward expenditure described in the last document that you received? Oh, Mr. Mr Speaker, Mr. Speaker as, as commentators have said, there was no provision in any of the long-term forecasts to pay for this, and it was, as one commentator said, never accurately costed. Those would not be the actions of either a responsible or a transparent government. Question number two, the Honourable Paula Bennett. Uh, to the Prime Minister, does she stand by all her answers to oral question one yesterday and